The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 7c. I find that I have another note upon this specific hurricane. Annals and Magazine of Natural History, Series 1, Volume 3, page 185. After one of the greatest hurricanes in the history of Ireland, some fish were found as far as 15 yards from the edge of the lake. Have another. This is a good one for the exclusionists. Full of fish in Paris. Said that a neighboring pond had been blown dry. Living Age, Volume 52, page 186. Date not given, but I have seen it recorded somewhere else. The best known full of fishes from the sky is that which occurred at Mountain Ash, in the valley of Abidar, Glamardenshire, February 11, 1859. The editor of The Zoologist, Volume 2, page 677, having published a report of a fall of fishes, writes, I am continually receiving similar accounts of frogs and fishes, but, in all the volumes of The Zoologist, I can find only two reports of such falls. There is nothing to conclude other than that hosts of data have been lost because orthodoxy does not look favorably upon such reports. The monthly weather review records several falls of fishes in the United States, but accounts of these reported occurrences are not findable in other American publications. Nevertheless, the treatment by the zoologist of the fall reported from Mountain Ash is fair. First appears in the issue of 1859, page 6493, a letter from the Reverend John Griffith, vicar of Abidar, asserting that the fall had occurred, chiefly upon the property of Mr. Nixon of Mountain Ash. Upon page 6540, Dr. Gray, of the British Museum, bristling with exclusionism, writes that some of these fishes, which had been sent to him alive, were very young minnows. He says... On reading the evidence, it seems to me most probably only a practical joke, that one of Mr. Nixon's employees had thrown a pail full of water upon another, who had thought fish in it had fallen from the sky, had dipped up a pailful from a brook. Those fishes, still alive, were exhibited at the Zoological Gardens, Regent's Park. The editor says that one was a minnow and that the rest were sticklebacks. He says that Dr. Gray's explanation is no doubt right. But, upon page 6564, he publishes a letter from another correspondent, who apologizes for opposing so high an authority as Dr. Gray, but says that he had obtained some of these fishes from persons who lived a considerable distance apart, or considerably out of range of the playful pail of water. According to the annual register, 1859 page 14, the fishes themselves had fallen by pailfuls, if these fishes were not upon the ground in the first place, we base our objections to the whirlwind explanation upon two data, that they fell in no such distribution as one could attribute to the discharge of a whirlwind, but upon a narrow strip of land, about 80 yards long and 12 yards wide. The other datum is again the suggestion that at first seemed so incredible, but for which support is piling up, a suggestion of a stationary source overhead. That ten minutes later another fall of fishes occurred upon the same narrow strip of land. Even arguing that a whirlwind may stand still axially, it discharges tangentially. Wherever the fishes came from it does not seem thinkable that some could have fallen and that others could have whirled even a tenth of a minute, then falling directly after the first to fall. Because of these evil circumstances the best adaptation was to laugh the whole thing off and say that someone had soused someone else with a pail full of water in which a few very young minnows had been caught up.